Hey, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my bathroom. That's right, we're doing a skincare routine tonight. Today, I want to talk about how to keep your moisture barrier healthy. You know, I have so many videos about how to heal it, how to strengthen it up, but what do you do when your barrier is good, but you just want to keep it that way? That's what tonight's routine is all about. I want to share with you some of the strategies, some of the ingredients and the techniques that I use to keep my barrier strong. It's not particularly about the products because, you know, everybody's skin is different. What I'm using may not work for you, but I hope the takeaway from tonight's routine is some, like I said, techniques, strategies, and ingredients that you can use in your skincare routine to really help keep your moisture barrier strong and healthy because the root of all healthy, glowy, lit from within skin is the moisture barrier. So if you're so ready to get this routine started, give the video a big thumbs up and let's jump right in. All right, double cleanse time. Because I do have like a full face of makeup on plus some sunscreen that I really wanna work through, I'm gonna do the double cleansing method starting with an oil cleanser first. This one is from Dam Dam. This is the Silk Rice Cleansing Oil. So this is kind of a newer brand at Sephora. It is a, a J Beauty brand. A lot of the products uh, use like rice, which is a very traditional ingredient, really in all Asian beauty, but of course in Japanese beauty. And I've really been liking this one. It is a fragrance-free oil cleanser. It has a nice uh, silky texture. It's not too heavy. You know, sometimes light oil cleansers can be way too thick and heavy. This is just the right uh, kind of consistency and it really breaks through uh, makeup quite nicely. So now I'm going in for the Isentry Yam Root Milk Cleanser. And this is obviously a very moisturizing cleanser as you can see from the texture. It is a very silky and rich and it feels amazing. The temperatures are starting to get a little bit cooler. I can feel my combination skin is getting a little bit more dry and a little bit more prone to dehydration and so this is one of the ways this is really my first tip here about keeping your barrier strong is really using the cleanser that is the gentlest but it's gonna be as effective as you need it to be, right? We don't need that squeaky clean, really dry and tight feeling after washing our faces. That's not respecting your skin barrier. I don't wanna start my skincare routines at a depleted you know, place when the cleanser really strips your skin of moisture. So I'm going in for something that is really calming and creamy and moisturizing. It feels really good. And especially because I did the oil cleanser first, I don't have as much to cleanse off of my skin. So this is feeling just right. So I just did a misting of the La Roche-Posay Thermal Water Spray. I've been really into it lately because, you know, that little like layer of mist, it seems to help like the absorption of everything else. It's something that I've been noticing, but I'm really picking this up because it is not just water, right? It's thermal water and it's got these, um, you know, vitamins and minerals in here that are actually really good for your skin microbiome. Super duper gentle product, but your skin microbiome is your skin's first line of defense. And it does work, you know, in tandem with your skin barrier to keep your skin protected. We're really just starting to learn a lot more about the skin microbiome, but vitamins, minerals, probiotics, prebiotics, fermented ingredients, all of those things can really help to promote a healthy microbiome. And that's one of the strategies that I use to keep my skin healthy all year round. So this is the Skin 1004 Pro Bio Sika Essence Toner. So Pro Bio is probiotics. Yeah, there's fermented centella in here and that's where we're getting the pro um the probiotic content. And that is again as I mentioned something that really helps to aid the health of your skin microbiome, that first line of defense. But this is actually just like a really nice hydrating toner too. It has um, a really nice uh, quickly absorbed texture, but there's just a hint of like a gel. Let me show you. Um there's a little bit of body. There's just a little bit of slip. Do you see that it's just a little bit thick? Yeah, you see how it like it's not like just running down my hand. There is some body to it. There's that little edge to it. It's a little gel like, but it's still so light. And so this is really nice because I get that deep brush of hydration uh, down into my skin, which I really, really appreciate. But then that little plumping gel right up at the top gives me that 
that little bouncy feeling that I absolutely love. So this is another um, way to keep your moisture barrier healthy in all seasons is really to hydrate your skin because, you know, your moisture barrier is what helps to hold hydration in place. When your moisture barrier is weak or damaged is when you're suffering from dehydration, right? So we really want to pack in lots of hydration and let that healthy, strong moisture barrier hold it all in place. I also just find when my skin is really hydrated, it just looks better. It just looks healthier. It looks firmer and plumper and juicier, right? And more glass skin-like and glowing. And so layering on hydration is not only good for keeping your skin in balance, but it can help your moisture barrier and it can also just help your skin look really healthy and glowy. So another part to keeping your moisture barrier strong is making sure that not only your hydration levels are ideal, but that your moisture levels are ideal as well. It's that oil and water balance in our skin. That's what keeps our skin feeling comfortable and healthy. And that mix is going to be different for everybody, depending on your skin type and depending on your skin needs and maybe your skin condition. So for me, I have combination skin. So I do need fairly equal amounts of that water and oil, right? Or the humectants and emollients or the hydration and moisture, all, you know, different words, meaning the same thing. We need that, that balance to be right, but I am prone to dehydration, which is not a skin type. It's more of a skin condition. I used to think it was a skin type many years ago, um, but it is more of a skin condition. And so I am prone to losing water through my skin. It's just kind of how my body is. Um, and then of course I know that my environment being a little bit more dry, being a little bit cooler now can make that worse. And so I focus in on lots of hydration, but also moisture to kind of help gently start to hug and, and help hold everything in place, aiding the function of my moisture barrier. So this is the Naturi Hatumungi Skin Conditioner. This is a J Beauty brand, and this is really a cult classic product. I am finally getting around to trying it out. This is one of those products that just keeps like slipping out of my cart, if you know what I mean. Um, so I finally have it. I've just started to use it, and this is the perfect time. And you know, I was talking about the oil and water balance, right? Or the, the hydration and moisture balance. That is actually like this product is that in a nutshell because it has a hydration element to it, but it actually is a really nice moisturization element to it as well. And that's what's really helping to keep my skin in balance. So look at this texture. Look at how thick. This is so much thicker than I thought it was going to be, but you can see once you start to spread it, it actually thins out. You can see there's a hydration element to this while also having that plump body and kind of that creamy element, but there is actually um, hydration and it kind of, as it hits your skin, it kind of melts down to a little bit of a lighter layer than it first looks as you squeeze it out of the bottle. And OMG, this feels so good. I've really been liking this. Um, you know, in J Beauty, sometimes they call toners uh, skin conditioners or sometimes they call them lotions. But um, I'm using this, you know, right after that watery toner based on the texture because it is, like I said, a little bit plumper, a little thicker. You saw it slightly stiffer than the Skin 104 toner. So that's how I know where to put it in my skincare routine. So this is the Skin 1004 Pro Bio Sika Ampule. And I'm just kind of sticking with the same themes here, right? I wanna get a little bit more of that probiotic goodness to really take care of my skin microbiome and make sure that I'm really giving my skin all of those beautiful um, nutrients, the amino acids, all of that goodness, right? That I was talking about earlier that really helps to keep our skin healthy and really helps it glow with that health. But you can see that I also chose this because the texture, right? There is that mixture of the hydration element and that slightly creamy element to this as well. But you can also see it's not super duper thick. So I'm building in my hydration and moisture balance in equal amounts so far in this routine. Now, let me give you a tip. I'm going to be using tretinoin tonight. And you may have noticed that I haven't really had a lot of active ingredients in my routine, right? Um, I haven't been using like vitamin C, um, AHAs, BHAs. I will be using some niacinamide later, but I haven't really been featuring that 
prominently in my routine, I've really been focusing in on the gentle hydration and moisture. And that is by design. You know, I really do try to focus in on just one like potent active ingredient per routine. Sometimes I'll add a few in, I will admit, but generally speaking, my approach to building a skincare routine is to just really pick one and focus in on that. Not only does it make things simpler for me, right? I'm using lots of products, but they're all very gentle and have a lower risk of testing my skin barrier, right? Um, but it also, yeah, it just doesn't push your skin as much. And from my personal experience, when I really like very badly damaged my moisture barrier, it's because I was throwing too much at my skin all at once, too many aggressive actives, too much retinol, too much vitamin C, too much BHA. It was too much, right? So this is a way for me to keep my eye on things um, and be able to pull back when needed and really just kind of see how my skin does. So this is the Stradia Lipid Gold Eye Cream. This is a new release. I have just barely begun to use it. Um, ask me in the comments if you want some more in-depth info because by the time this video comes out, I'll have been using this for a few weeks now. Um, but quite honestly, I've just gone through it. Just a few applications. So far, I'm really liking it. Let me show you the texture because if you're familiar with liquid gold, this is different. So it's ever so slightly thicker. I don't know if you're kind of picking this up on the camera, but it's a little bit thicker and it's actually a little bit more occlusive um, than the uh, lipid gold, the serum lotion, which I'll show you in a little bit too, because you know I'm gonna be using that. But this is actually a nice uh, choice for this time of year, and I was really excited to get this in the mail. The brand sent it to me a little bit before it was released. Because this is loaded with ceramides, cholesterol, fatty acids, um, there's some really nice peptides in here that help with brightening the under eye area or the uh, top lid area too. I always say under eye, um, but sometimes we need that brightening on the top and I definitely, you can see I need a little bit of it. Um, so there's brightening in here, but there's barrier care in here and it's creamy and silky and occlusive. And that is so important because this area for me dries out quite easily in the colder weather. So now I'm applying Lipid Gold. There was a name change. It used to be called Liquid Gold. Same formula, nothing has changed with the ingredients or the formulation, but they have updated the name. I think it better reflects what's inside the bottle. It's full of lipids, which helps your skin barrier. And I know I was not going to focus too much on the ceramides cholesterol fatty acid uh, aspect of um, your moisture barrier, right? Because you know, we already know this, right? I've been talking about it for five years. We know. Um, but it is still important to add these into your routine. If you do have concerns about keeping your barrier strong, or if you're like me, prone to dehydration or prone to your skin barrier fluctuating with changes in the temperature, even when your barrier is in a strong state, these ingredients can help when you're using things like tretinoin. As I mentioned, cold weather, dry environment, seasonal changes, just prone to dehydration. It's super super helpful. This is my product of choice. And I did just mix in a couple of drops of the Fortify Facial Oil. It is a blend of different oils with really great fatty acid, um, omega-3, 6, and 9 fatty acids, which also aid your moisture barrier uh, as well. So it's tretinoin time. I'm gonna be using my Dermatica compound formula. I know I said I was only focusing on one active. Technically it's one bottle, <laughs> it's one product. Um, but with Dermatica, I have two active ingredients in here. I have 0.05% of tretinoin and 8% of azelaic acid. And I mean, this is so, so helpful. Um, the tretinoin obviously is helping me with my well aging goals, helping to stimulate collagen. It also helps to keep my pores clear. Um, since I started tretinoin, I definitely noticed that even like just the little minor breakouts that I sometimes get have uh, definitely lessened. It also helps to brighten up my skin. I am very prone to hyperpigmentation. And since using tretinoin, it's been three years now for sure, uh, almost going on four actually. Um, I've noticed that the hyperpigmentation does heal faster. So I just dotted it around my face because uh, you want to use like a pea size amount of your tretinoin cream. So I just dotted that small amount around my face and now just kind of helping to evenly spread it out in a thin layer. So my skin's been doing pretty good with tretinoin, uh, really no complaints. You know, I have sensitive skin. It took me a while to get used to it. And then I went up in percentage. 
and that actually went pretty well. Um, but I really feel like I've just really hit a really good spot with my tretinoin right now. I'm sure check back with me in a couple of months when it's really cold. I might have a slightly different story, but right now um, I'm in a really good place. My skin is accepting it well. And you know, taking care of your barrier is really a big reason why my skin is taking so well to that higher percentage with tretinoin. So I'm gonna be using the Pyongyang Yul Black Tea in Rich Cream. And I have to show you this texture because this is so beautiful for this chilly night. It is so like buttery. And do you see just how like rich? And you can see it still has like a little bit of thickness to it, even after running it across my skin. So you can tell that it's gonna be really buttery, kind of thick, maybe a little heavy. That's what I want. <laughs> you know, sometimes heavy is like a dirty word when it comes to describing moisturizer textures. But like for me right now, oh, this is heaven. This feels so good. It's definitely richer than CeraVe moisturizing cream, which is another staple of mine. I think this is even slightly richer than the Ilyune cream, which, you know, was reformulated last year um, to be a little bit silkier and richer. Um, this even has more, I think. It just has like this like beautiful kitsch kiss of silky, creamy richness, butteriness. I mean, these are all the best words to describe this moisturizer. It just melts into my skin, but it just feels really nourishing and comforting. But I do wanna share one more tip with you about sealing everything in, because sometimes, you know, your, your moisturizer doesn't always feel like it's quite enough. You feel like you just need to do a little bit more. Maybe you're waking up with that slightly dehydrated feeling in your skin. You know you need to step it up, but maybe you're not ready to switch up your whole routine just yet or go for a thicker moisturizer. That's when that slugging technique can be really handy. I just did a video about sleeping masks, so definitely check that out if you're looking for that type of product. But tonight I am just reaching for CeraVe Healing Ointment. I am just gonna put it around the eye area. Remember I was telling you how my um, eyes get a little bit dry? I also noticed because I wear like a, a an eye mask when I sleep to like uh, cut out all the darkness, right? It helps me fall asleep a lot faster. I feel like it kind of absorbs a little bit of my skincare and it kind of contributes to that drier uh, kind of feeling to my under eye area. So I'm just running a little bit of it just in there, just in that area. Feel empowered, you know, to um, slug just in select areas. You don't have to put it all over your face if you don't want to. And so that just helps to seal in all that good lipid gold eye cream, all of that good Pyongyang Yul moisturizer, all that good hydration I put on before, and make sure that that's not getting absorbed by my silk eye mask. So that's gonna be it for tonight. You know, I really hope that the key takeaways made sense here about keeping your barrier healthy. Um, you know, First and foremost, thinking about your microbiome. When you have a healthy uh, skin barrier and you just wanna keep it that way, you can afford to start thinking about things like your microbiome, right? And so building in those ingredients to really um, up the skin nutrition, right? And really help keep your skin healthy. The hydration and moisture balance. I talk about this in every single routine. I think it is really basic, but it's really overlooked, I think, by a lot of people when building skincare routines. Um, finding out that right uh, oil and water mix for your skin, it doesn't have to be lots of separate different products. It doesn't have to be like how I did it, but just finding that right balance for you and knowing that you can kind of tweak that um, per the seasons and or per how your skin is feeling that night. Also focusing in on one maybe two, right? But really focusing in your energy on one active per routine, or maybe even just a handful of actives like just for right now. It's so tempting to throw everything at our skin, but that's how we get our skin barrier in a weak and damaged state and vulnerable, right? So take your time, be patient. I know that there's so much fun things to explore, but we can take our time. We have time and we only have one face. So let's, and we only have one skin barrier, right? So let's treat it right. Let's go slow. Let's be patient and consistent consistent with our products. And you know, finally just hugging everything in. You would be surprised at how much just the right amount of occlusivity or slugging can go with fighting dehydration, 
uncomfortable, irritated skin in any, you know, type of seasonal change. It can go a long way to just keeping your skin healthy and in balance and keep that moisture barrier strong. I hope that those were the main takeaways for tonight's routine. I'm really glad that you were here with me tonight because, you know, I'm going to be able to share all of this information if you weren't here watching. So I'm so grateful to you. Uh, please hit subscribe if you haven't already and this routine was helpful for you. And I'll see you in the next video. I hope you're healthy healthy, happy, and safe. I hope you have a great night. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.